We are moving on to computer set qualitative data analysis and um, uh, Maria Victoria Sule will take over from here. Thank you, Antigoni. So I will start. So yes, I will take from this part. Okay, so as uh, Antigoni said, I will speak about computer assisted qualitative data analysis software. And this software offers uh, tools that assist with qualitative research, such as the transcription analysis, coding and text interpretation, recursive extraction, content analysis, discourse analysis, and the methodology used, for example, in grounded theory. These are just some um, examples. So what does computer uh, software offer to qualitative researchers? Well. This is very important uh, that you understand that CACDAS software do not do any real analysis for us, but rather they have been uh, designed to help uh, researchers with the mechanization of the clerical aspects of data management. So CACDAS replaced uh, the traditional tools of qualitative data analysis. I, I don't know if you had access to the Moodle platform, but there, we have uploaded a video related to the traditional use of uh, qualitative data analysis that can be done with paper, pen, and scissor, but CACTAS replaced that with tools of the digital age. So in the sense, how can CACTAS support you? Well, uh, the purpose of the software is, again, not to provide you with a methodological or analytic framework but rather to support you in certain tasks, such as planning and managing your project, writing analytic memos, marking and commenting on data, searching for string words or phrases, developing a coding schema, coding and recoding, organizing data, mapping and generating output. So, in relation to this, well, Anne Lewins and Christina Silver, they have written this a very interesting book that I highly recommend to you entitled Using Software in Qualitative Research, a step-by-step -step guide, where they present uh, how to use different kind of um, software. So they also posit this question, which is the best CACDAC package. Uh, and they say that while this is the most frequently asked question, it is impossible to be answered. Why? Um, because all software have tools in common, but also their own uh, distinctive features. So you will have to decide based on what you want to do in your research. Yes, some of these um, software are the most frequently uh, mentioned in the literature, Maxda. I think somebody was uh, writing this on, on the chat. But uh, also Atlas, those hyper research, uh, well, Maxda again, and Transana, QDA Minor, and of course, Envivo, which is the one that we will be uh, presenting today. So we will move now to the Envivo part, and I will tell you a little bit about Envivo. Envivo was developed in 1981 as a nudist by Tom Richards and Lynn Richards as a scroll mode Mac package at La Trobe University in Melbourne. In actually, uh, Tom Richard helped uh, Lynn, his wife, to build this uh, software for her work as a sociologist. And subsequently in 2001, I think a QSR International was formed from the original nudist and which and now uh, they develop and support all QSR software products. So some features of Envivo, Envivo allows you to import and analyze images, videos, emails, web data, relationship codings, charts, word clouds, word trees explore and um, to have a comparison diagrams, import articles from reference uh, management software, review coding with coding stripes and highlights, matrix coding, coding word frequency, uh, text search and coding comparison query. So this is um, some of the features of uh, Envivo, but you can do many, many other things. 
as you can see in this slide, and people support a wide range of data. Uh, I think uh, one of the participants was writing before that she was interested in doing coding from open-ended question. Well, you can do this from uh, Excel files. You, you also have, um, you can import uh, SPSS, Word documents, PDF, uh, videos, social media like Twitter or, or Facebook, and many more. So the research process where with Envivo, Envivo, Envivo helps you in the collection of your data by integrating, for example, Word, Excel, and Outlook. And we also have a it helps with your transcription, and Vivo has a, a transcription tool. Also, with the Vivo desktop, you can manage, analyze, and visualize your data. And there is also another tool uh, of Vivo, which is called Envivo Collaboration. Uh, if you want to collaborate with uh, colleagues or maybe with your supervisor. In today's presentation, we will focus on this part, as you can see in the um, Envivo desktop. I will show you how to use the software, the basic features. We cannot cover all of it. And I will show you how to manage, analyze, and visualize your, your data. So in the Moodle platform that uh, I think Laia shared with you the link in the chat, you had the instructions to install Envivo in the section before the webinars and the instruction looks like this. Okay, so we move now to the demonstration part. And so during the demo, uh, we will show you how to create a new project with Envivo to understand the different sections of Envivo, import different type of files such as Word, PDF, image, audio, survey, and websites, create codes and code your data, visualize your codes, create cases, uh, create memos, and explore your data with queries and, and diagram. If you have um, downloaded Envivo, Envivo will be here in your desktop. And as soon as you open Envivo, this is what you will see. First, you have here uh, your account. You, in my case, I am logging with my name and I have an institutional account, but if you have downloaded the, the free trial, it, uh, your, uh, your name will appear here. Just for the record, this is the last NVivo version, which was launched in uh, March, 2020. So for those of you who have answered that you have used um, NVivo, maybe, you uh, were familiar with the previous versions such as Envivo 12 or 11, but as you can see, it has changed a lot. So I will show you all this. So as I was saying here, you have your account, then you will have a, a video tutorials for those who are new to Envivo. So if you click on uh, here, it will take you to the different parts. Uh, here in the learn and connect, you, will, you can access to the Customer Hub, which has a lot of uh, resources. Also, you can access to the free transcription, which is only for a trial. The transcription in Envivo are not free. You have to pay for, for them, okay? And here you have sample uh, projects, which I have downloaded, as you can see here on my left, uh, in the left-hand side of, um, of my screen, which is environmental change down is I'm not working on environmental issues. I just downloaded to show you that you can also download from here. And in more uh, sample projects, you have access, for example, to literature review and to a survey, and you can download all of them. So the first thing that I'm going to do with you is to start by creating a new project. And the, what you need to do is click here on new project and you need to give it a name to this project. For example, I will give the name Tell in Higher Education. You need to save your project somewhere. I will save it on, the, on my desktop. You can give it a description. This is optional. 
But if you have many projects, it will help you in your future if you don't remember what that project was about. And you can also here, you can select here the language for the interface. By default, you have the English US, but you can also work with Chinese or English UK, French, German, Japanese, Spanish, and, and Portuguese. And then you click on next, and uh, they will ask you here if you want to be reminded every 15 minutes to save this. I recommend you that you, you click yes by default, and you have created your new project. Right away, uh, you will have a start tour that will take you to the different part of Envivo, as you can see here. If you click on next, it will show you how to import or organize your coding or organize your, your cases. And uh, you can close this by uh, clicking here on uh, skip tool. Once you have closed this, uh, and we will have uh, something like a kind of a guide to each part. For example, here on files, they explain you what are files. If you need more information, you can click on more. And this is for all the sections that you have here on the navigation panel, which is on your left. For example, if you click on codes, it will also explain you what are codes. And if you need more information, again, you click on more. And this is for all the sections. Um, we have uploaded this as well in, in our Moodle course, as you can see here. This is in Introduction to Envivo and Working with Envivo. So here you have all the definitions and how to work uh, with Envivo. I mean, the key concepts in, a, in, in Envivo. So I go back here to my uh, Envivo account and I will explain you a little bit what are you seeing here. You have here, for example, the, the app uh, ribbon where you have files, a file where you can save um, your, your project home. Now I, I can do, I can't do anything here because I haven't imported anything yet. Here in the import tab is where you are going to import your different kinds of files. I will show you this during the demo. Here is where you can create your codes, your cases. You can also explore your data here with this tab by uh, running a word frequency or by creating a diagram. You can also share your project you can, by clicking on export project. Once you have a code, uh, some codes, you can also export your codes and you can share with, for example, your supervisor or with a colleague. And here in module is where you have access to collaboration cloud or to the transcription that I was mentioning earlier. So this is the app ribbon. And here you have the navigation panel where you have your, your files. You can organize your files. You can have your codes here and your cases. Uh, in Envivo cases represent the people, the institutions, um, the places involved in your study. You have also your notes, like memos and annotations, as Anna mentioned during her, her presentation. You have sets. Uh, sets are a collection of project items. They can include include data files, codes, cases, uh, memos. And here you have Explore, where you can see your queries, some visualization, and, and reports. The first thing that I'm going to do is to show you how to import a file. And we will start with a basic file, which is a Word document. So you go here. You need to have your files stored in your computer. And I want to import this interview from Annabella. So open, and this is important, okay? When you import a file, Envivo will ask you if you want to create a case to each imported file. Yes, and it will ask you if you want uh, to create a new classification for this file. And because Annabella was, was, was one of my participants, I will classify her as people involved in my study. And then you have here import. I can give a description about uh, Annabella. 
if I have many participants, I might want to do this. This is optional again, always in NVivo, the descriptions are optional. But if you have many participants, I recommend you so that you remember who is each participant. For example, Annabella was instructor in higher education. Um, for example, uh, she was an instructor at the Department of Multimedia at CUT. I remember that Annabella um, took uh, the interview and the survey, and we will see all this. So this is how it will appear your um, the files. But uh, probably you will be working with many files, and I recommend you to organize your, your files, maybe in different folders. And to do this, you just go to File, right-click, and New Folder. And here you can give it a name for the different kinds of files that you will be working with. For example, a survey, or if you want to have a different folder for your literature review, you can also add this. And again, the description is always optional. So you can have you can have different folders where you can organize your, your data. So I will go back now where we started, um, where I have other projects. And to do this, I might want to switch to work with, uh, with another project. So I go here, I click on here on the icon of Envivo. And here it will appear, it will appear uh, this last project that I have just created uh, with you. But I will work with uh, one that uh, we will show you now specifically designed for this webinar, which is qualitative research in Tel. When you try to switch to another project, Envivo will automatically ask you if you want to save what you have done. So you click on the other project and yes, save and close. And it will appear the other project that I am interested in, where I have already um, uploaded the documents, which we will see today. So as you can see, and as I showed you before, uh, you import the different kinds of files from the import tab, but you have different kinds of file. We have already imported the file from uh, Annabella before, but I have other kinds of files that I will be showing you how to import. So let's check what you can do once you have imported a file such as a Word document from this participant from Annabella which took uh, an interview after she attended a webinar. She also took a survey as well, and we will see all this data. So the first thing that you can do once you open the file is that you can edit, OK? To edit this transcript, you might be reading this and you realize that this is not good or something uh, is not what she said. So you click on edit. And for example, here she says, I don't agree, but you listen the the audio again. And no, she says agree. She didn't say that she don't agree. So this is what Annabella said. So you change your, your transcript. Another thing that you can do once you uh, open the transcript, your Word document, is to uh, add comments, as Anna mentioned in her in her part, in her presentation, you can add a comment, okay, an annotation. And to do this, you first, you need to select, okay? Here, the interviewer says, I understand. So has any of your lectures or courses been affected by having, I imagine you had to go over the digital teaching for the most part. So this is interesting. I don't want to code this now, but I want to make uh, a comment. So I go to this icon of the comments, add an annotation. And I might be wondering why, why the interviewer asked this. And it will appear here as a comment, OK? Another thing that you have here once you open your Word document is these lines that you can see here. These are 
called coding stripes. Uh, coding stripe, if I click here, I will show all. Coding stripes are color bars that are displayed alongside a code, okay? The coding stripes show you uh, where your codes are. So if I click here, for example, it will appear on my text what I have coded. I will show you now how to create a code. I'm just showing you what you have here on the on this first document that we open. To remove this, you are not interested in the highlight, none, so it disappeared. Okay. Another thing that you can do with a Word document uh, like this is to zoom in and zoom out your your text. Okay. So this is what happened when you open one one document where you have your your transcript. I will show you now how to create a code. Okay. As my colleagues mentioned during the presentation, uh, you can follow an inductive approach from salient aspects uh, identified in your data, or a deductive approach, uh, which is according to predefined areas of interest. And for this, you might need template code. So in this new and vivo version, 2020, there are three ways of uh, creating a code. Here. It's always important to remember what you are seeing here in the middle. Here are my files, okay? So if I want to create a code, you go to, I will close this. I will go to create and code. And you can give it a name to this new code, like artificial uh, intelligence in higher education. You can give a description, which is, optional as well, and you can give it a color. So you can then see uh, your coding in the document. And I choose yellow, okay. And it was created this uh, new code, okay. And the, your codes will appear here under codes in your navigation panel here. Okay, so this is the code that I just created, artificial intelligence, in higher education. I don't have any reference yet because I have just created and it has this, this color. Another way to create a code is once you are in codes, right click, new code, and the same steps that I have just shown you, okay? But as you can see here, you have codes, but I want to work with my files. So I will go again to my files and this will disappear from here, okay? So the new version of Envivo, let's go back to Annabella, where we were. So the next, uh, the new version of Envivo, you can create a code from here, from these circles, okay? The codes are always represented with circles in Envivo. So you create here, and you need to select something in order to create a code, okay? Code selection, and it will go to your predefined areas of interest of your the codes that you have already created, or you can create a new code by clicking here. So I show you how to create a code. I will show you how to code from a Word document, from an interview, for example. So, so I remove the annotations. I don't want to see here down. Uh, so I want to quote something from Annabella in her interview here in the fourth paragraph. I think she's talking about a uh, hybrid learning due to the uh, pandemic, blended format, hybrid learning here. Okay, so you will select what you want to quote. And in the previous versions of Envivo, what you have to do is to go back to codes and drag and drop. But in the new version, it's easier because you just click here in the circle, code selection, and I'm interested in moving this to, she's talking about hybrid learning. So I will click here, code selection to hybrid learning, and it will automatically go to 
my code. Okay, so this is how you can code from a word document, in this case, from an interview. As you can see here in the files, I don't have only um, Word documents, but I have uh, different files. They are identified by different icons, such as uh, Word, as I mentioned earlier, PDF, audio files, video images, and so on. So we will move to how to import an image and how to code from an image. To do this, you need to go to Import, Files, and select the image that you want to import. And again, uh, MBIVO will ask you if you want to create a case for each uh, imported file. And you, if you're interested in create a case, you click that uh, box. So I have here an image, which is virtual reality in language learning. And you need to capture the part that you are interested to code from the image. For example, here, the binoculars. And again, I go to the circle to code, code selection. And this is in tools. Under tools, I have different, for example, VR binoculars. And click there and code to this code. And this will automatically be here in your code, OK? Let's see how you can code from an audio file. Again, you will import your audios or your videos from file with the same process that I showed you earlier. So I have already imported one. This is an audio from a professor from Stanford University where she speaks about different ways of using virtual reality to enhance uh, learning in higher education. So I will play a little bit this audio. We have to really think beyond efficiency, beyond computing power, be beyond just can connecting you this? devices yes, and hear. think about connecting people. Okay, so this is this is her, her talk about this. So let's say that I am interested in this very first part of, of her speech, where she is talking about uh, connectivity. So I will go back to the beginning and to start coding from an audio, what you need to do is next to play, you have a very small um, arrow. And in order to start coding, you need to press that arrow once it's in the play mode. And to stop, you will need to press on the finish selection, okay? So let's see this again. To really think beyond efficiency, beyond computing power, be beyond just connecting devices and think about connecting people. Nice talk. So she was talking about going beyond connecting devices. Here, I'm not sure if you can, if you can see this, but here there is a very small uh, box and this is your, what you have just coded, okay? So I will click here and I will select code, code selection. And she was talking about, as I said, connectivity. Click on connectivity, code selection to connectivity. And this will uh, automatically appear under your code. What else can you do with an audio file? Well, you can edit this. You need to click on edit first, and you can start typing there if you want to transcribe your audio file. But as I mentioned um, earlier, NVivo offers this tool that is called uh, NVivo transcription. So to do this, you need to go to modules, click on transcription, and start transcribing. Now, this will take you here to your NVivo portal to your account and you click on NVivo transcription. Once you click there, it will take you here, okay? But as you can say, it says buy, okay? It's, uh, it's not free. It's only free for the trial. So maybe you want to check if your institution has access to this, you might want to ask this to your institution. Okay, 
And so for the, uh, just for the record, uh, if you have, for example, a file, an audio file of an hour uh, for Envivo, it will take uh, about 30 minutes to complete the transcription. And again, you can always edit. Eh? If you think that something wasn't uh, right, you can always edit this. I will move now to the to how you can work with and before I move to the PDF, the same works for video files. Okay, it works in the same way. So I will show you now how you can go from a PDF if you are using MBO for your literature review. Again, you can import here from your files if you already have a paper there that you want to analyze or you can go to uh, bibliography here in the same tab in import and let's say that you're working with Mendeley and it will ask you to export uh, one of these to to import one of these files i will show you very quickly how you can do this from Mendeley for example here if you have this paper about uh, from Lee that he's talking about on the effectiveness of robot assisted language learning. Here, when you try to export this, what you need to select is the RIE format. It's the only one that, that can be imported into NVIVO, okay? So I go now to the PDF. Here we have a paper from Palmer Schindler. This is a paper that we wrote in the project. It's about interdisciplinary doctoral training in technology enhanced learning in Europe. So it will work in the same way as we have seen with a Word document. Uh, if you want to quote something from a PDF, you just select. For example, at the very beginning here, we are speaking about what is technology enhanced learning. So I go here to the circle again to code this selection, code selection. I look into my code and this is um, a tell definition, let's say, and I code this selection into this particular code. Something else that you can do with a, a PDF is you can code from an image. For example, here we have an image in uh, this image, we are referring to the different terms used for tell around the world. The only thing that you need to do is here to change from text into region and you select this. And again, you go to code, code selection. And these are terms for tell. And it will appear here in your codes, okay? Okay, we move now to the survey part. So you can also import surveys into, into MVivo, Excel files, and you can select any of these surveys, for example, this one. So what MVivo will tell you uh, here is that uh, your respondents will be stored as cases and your close-ended questions will be stored or created as a case attribute. And the open-ended questions will be created as codes. This doesn't mean that you cannot code from your open-ended questions into a different code. You can do this, but, but by default, and Vivo will do this. So once you try to import a, a survey, you click on Next. Next, next, and finish. So I will show you here how this looks like, uh, open-ended question teaching methodology. As I was mentioned you earlier, we have the interview from Martha and Annabella, but these participants also took a survey after they attend specific webinar. And you can code also from their open-ended questions, okay? So again, you need to select a part, for example,
this part where she's, I think that is Marta who is talking about Okay, let's go to uh, Annabella. So you just select as we have been doing for the other documents. She's talking here about the parts of this course of the webinar that ate her uh, the most. And she said the assignment, so I can code this selection. I don't have anything related to this. So I will create a new code. Yes, here it is and usefulness of the course and code selection to this new code. Okay, so this is how you code from an Excel file. And the last type of data that I will show you how to import and code from is uh, social media. You can bring social media or websites. You can also bring social media like Twitter or Facebook. Uh, and to do this, you need to use another NVivo tool. This one is free, which is called NCapture. NCapture is free web browser extension for Chrome that enables you to gather a web content to import into uh, NVivo. Okay. So I will not show you how to install this, but so that you know, you have all this uh, in a manual that we have created an introduction to NVivo. So there you will find how to install this tool, which is called NCapture, okay? So in order to bring in social media or a website, you need to have this extension and you go, for example, to this. Here we have the website of EITEL where uh, they are announcing this project detail. And I want to see the, I want to capture the, the website, uh, sorry, the Facebook page. Here we have the post that EITEL did uh, recently. So in order to capture this information, I will click on this tool, the NCAPTURE tool, the, this extension. and this will ask me automatically, they will give you the, the title or the name of the page. And it will ask me if I want to, if I want to capture this as data set or as a web page, I prefer in this case to work with data set capture and it will be downloaded as an Excel file. I will go back here and to import this, you go to and capture and you can import this. I cannot do this now because I have already done, uh, done this, but once you have selected here, you click import. And this is how it will look like, exactly like the Excel uh, file that I showed you earlier. And you will use the same method to code, you will analyze what you have there, the post, who posted this, what is in the post, either if there is a picture or, or not, and if there is a link and so on. And you can, again, to code something from here, you select, go to your code, code selection, and you select the codes where you want this information to, to be. So far, I have shown you how to organize your data, your files, and how to code, how to import different kinds of files. And before moving to cases, what I want to do is to go to codes again. And here is where you have all your, your codes with different colors. In case you have forgotten to give it a color, to your codes, you can always do it at a later stage. Just right click, right click on your code and add a color. It's not allowing me now to give it a color. Okay, now here, uh, blue, let's say for fields and tell, and it will appear here, okay? You can visualize 
as well a code from different sources. For example, this code teaching methodology, if you click on it, you can see here in the summary which files are related to this particular code, which is teaching methodologies. And I have two participants here, Annabella and Martha, with a Word document, open-ended questions, and the PDF from Palmer uh, Schindler et al. You can also click on here on references, and all the references under this code will appear. And you can always, uh, with a right-click, export this code and it will be exported, for example, in a Word document if you want to share this with somebody who doesn't have in vivo, but you want to show what you have done, for example, your, your supervisor. Here you have different kinds of text, like the Annabella and Martha, the PDF, and I have the data set from the open-ended questions and what I have selected from that code, okay? So I move now to cases. Cases uh, represent, as I said earlier, uh, the people, the places, or the institutions uh, involved in your study. Why I have these two cases here, uh, Annabella and Martha, if you remember, when I imported these two um, Word documents, and Vivo asked me if I wanted to create a case, and I think, yes, that's why they, they are here. But if you forgot to create a case, you can always do this at a later stage. For example, if you remember in the participants that took the survey, only Annabella and Martha did the interview, but there were more participants and I want to see what is there in their open-ended questions. So there are two ways. One, create, you go here in the app ribbon, create case, and you give it a name, a description and click okay. Or if you're in cases, right click, new case, and again. So here I have, for example, John, which was one of the participants that also took the survey. I remember that John was as well an instructor in higher education, but in this case, he wasn't at the multimedia department of CUT, but at University Pompeu Fabra, let's say. And so I can identify him later. So this is how you can create a case. So I click on case. As you can see, I don't have any file or references related to John. So what I'm going to do is I go up again to my uh, files and I click on the open-ended questions and I can find John here, with this, which is the third participant. And I want to quote all the information from John, not in a code, but in his case, okay? So I go back to cases here in the navigation panel and I select this from John and I code this into his case, not a particular code, okay? Again, I drag and drop into John case here, okay? So this is how you can, let's say, code the information from a case into a case, but not into a, into a code. Okay, so we'll close this here. As I said, John only took the survey, not the interview, but Annabella and Martha did. So if I click on Annabella, what I will see is here, all uh, her interview and also towards the end I will see the information from the survey okay if you click if you click here it will take you again to the the document the survey so this is in relation to to cases I move now to the next section which is notes and we will finish soon Notes, as, are, as you know, are the researcher's view on things. And for example, you can use uh, memos to keep a track of your thoughts. If I click here on, on memos, I think Anna referred to memo during her presentation. I have created different memos. In order to create a new one, right-click, 
new memo. And again, I can give it a name and a description. Let's say now I want to write something about this webinar and I can give a description and okay. So in order to start writing your thoughts, you can start typing or I can uh, ask you a question. How is the webinar going? This is a question for you. Something else that you can do with your memos which is uh, important because it will help you to track chronologically what you are thinking is to uh, insert a date or time stamp and to do this you need to go to edit insert insert date time and it will appear here i will show you on another one teaching with technologies. For example, here uh, on the 1st of June, I didn't have any idea, but later I will start elaborating more my thoughts on what I was seeing on my, on my files, on my participants, the codes and, and so on. So this is how you can create a, a memo. And I will move now to the last part of this demonstration, which is how you can explore your, your data. So here you go to the app ribbon and let's say I will move now to my files. And let's say that you have just started working with your files and you want to know what is going on there. So you can run a uh, word frequency. You click here on word frequency. And then Vivo will ask, will by default it will be run in all your files but if you are interested to see what is going on on a particular file you can select that file by going to select items and click on let's say for example martha and to see what is going on there uh, but now i want to see what is going on on all my files if there is something important on them so i will run a query which displayed uh, the most uh, 100 frequent words. So I write here the, the number of words that I want to, to see and here run query. And this is how this will appear. And what is showing me here is that the most frequent uh, word in all my document is learning. I can also create a word cloud it will take um, some uh, minutes, no, no minutes, some seconds. You see, so here is the, the word cloud and you can export this, uh, export the word cloud if you want to use this in a presentation uh, about your, your progress, for example, in your, your PhD. So, as we saw uh, earlier, uh, we saw that learning was the most frequent word in my, in my document. So I might want to know what are the relations of this particular word, which is learning. So I will click on the word and right click and run text search query for learning. I want to see the relation that this word has in, in the different uh, documents that I have. And it will tell me that it appeared 56 times in the, um, the Facebook page of EITEL, three times in Annabella uh, files, in another study that we have, done, uh, we have conducted in detail in Europe, 77 times, and so on. I can also visualize my data from here, from WordTree, and see that, okay, learning, of course, is uh, related to enhanced learning because of the, um, the, the paper, for example, that we saw from uh, Palmer Schindler et al. But it also appeared in other documents. For example, if I click here on learning analytics, it will show me that it appeared in the detail file. The last thing, again, explore how to create a diagram. I can explore with a diagram 
my codes, for example. The codes that I have, sorry, let me uh, close what I have here. I want to, uh, for example, see what is going on in this file that I have 17 codes. So I want to see which are those codes. So I go to explore diagram, explore diagram, and this will appear. You see, this is the file and I have all these codes. I also have a case, which is CUT, our university related to this particular Excel file. And you can also compare cases. We have three cases. We have Annabella, John, and Martha. I click on all of them. OK, let's uh, see in only, in only two. And here we have these two cases, Annabella and Martha. This uh, diagram is telling me that Annabella took the, the interview. Both participants also responded to the survey. And I have a code for both participants, which is what are the strengths of the course, but I have only one code. I have one code for Martha that is not shared uh, with Annabella. So I think that uh, so far I have uh, covered the most basic features of Envivo. We wanted just to show you the basic feature. Imagine what you can do with, with Envivo. 